Do you recognise this? It's mouthwash, something lots of people use every day as an extra way to clean out their mouths. Actually, mouthwash has been around for thousands of years, but if you went back into the past, you might not recognise it. Modern mouthwash includes ingredients with the following properties. Antiseptic, anti-cavity and anti-inflammatory, to name a few. Surprisingly enough, some of these also occur in historical mouthwashes too. Let's take a look. The earliest mention of mouthwash is found in ancient Chinese historical records from over 4,000 years ago. That's twice as old as the Great Wall. The ancient Greeks also used mouthwash, but they made theirs from salt, alum and vinegar. Salt is known to have antiseptic, antibiotic and anti-inflammatory markers. Alum is used to treat canker sores and is astringent and antibacterial too. Vinegar is also useful. Although it has few definite properties, it's been used in medicine for years and is antibacterial. However, I'm not sure how good this mouthwash would have tasted. Medieval mouthwash was different again. It was made from peppercorns, which contain piperine and are antibacterial, and also mint, which helps with throat irritations, and is known as a traditional breath freshener, and on its own often acts as an antiseptic mouth rinse. The third and final ingredient in medieval mouthwash is wine. Wine? Yes, wine. I know it sounds bizarre. However, wine itself is astringent and contains some of the same properties as alum. There are lots of examples from the past where it's been used. For example, this was written in an 11th century book aimed at women. The woman should wash her mouth after dinner with very good wine. Then she ought to dry her teeth very well and wipe them with a new white cloth. Finally, let her chew each day fennel or lovage or parsley. Could you imagine doing that every day? We will follow on from this and be using grape juice in our recipe today. Ta-da! Medieval mouthwash. Do you think it actually tastes okay? You'll just have to give the recipe a try to find out. Now you have seen some examples of the ancient mouthwash, we can compare it to modern mouthwash. What do you think the similarities and differences are? It's interesting that so many of the ingredients have changed, yet some remain the same. For example, the mint we used in our medieval mouthwash can almost always be tasted in the minty freshness of today. For a list of ingredients, instructions and more information, follow the link provided down below. And remember to let us know in the comments how you think it tastes. Also, how do you keep your breath fresh? Don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more DIY videos 